The Pokemon franchise is full of likable characters, whether it's the iconic gym leaders of each region, or the lovable side characters that help you on your journey, but Pokemon Legends Arceus has a character that's the opposite of likable, Melly. Melly is a random jerk in the Diamond Clan, who spends his entire time acting like a rude, egotistical moron, and doing everything he can to stop you from quelling his frenzied electrode. But, as much as I truly despise Melly, I still can't help but wonder if he could possibly have a redemption arc, an arc where he has to help everyone his Yui and quell all the Frenzy Null Pokémon by only using the Pokémon he has. Could Melly beat Pokémon Legends Arceus? Well, let's find out. Here are the rules. I can only use the Pokémon that Melly uses in this game, and we'll get to those Pokémon as we go along. In addition to that, I'm also not allowed to use items in battle, and I can't overlevel my Pokémon. However, if I need to boost my Pokémon's effort levels via Grit items, I'm allowed to use other po Pokémon to catch wild Pokémon to grind for Grit items. Finally, if you enjoy this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome content like this. But now, let's step into Melly's shoes and start this challenge. We start our journey by skipping through the tutorial, and trying to customize our character to look the most like Melly. I tried my best with what's available so far, hopefully we'll get more stuff later. Then we go to Deer Track Heights and Obsidian Fieldlands at night to catch Melly's first Pokémon, Zubat. Zubat is a poison and flying type Pokémon, but they're kind of infamous for challenge videos, as their stats are pretty terrible. On the plus side, in Legends Arceus, they learn more moves than they do, than they do in older generations. Our first mission is to beat the Alpha Krikatoon at the Deer Track Heights camp. I knew I'd probably have to grind for grit items to beat this, but I took on Kri Krikatoon right away just to see how bad Zubat truly is. And yeah, I attempted this fight a couple times only for Zubat to get destroyed by Aerial Ace. It doesn't help that level 12, Zubat only has 3 moves, Gust, Bite, and Hypnosis. Well, it's time to grind for grit items. In case you don't know how that works, in Legends Arceus, if you release Pokémon you've caught, they will drop Grit Dust, Gravel, Pebbles, and Rocks, which you can use to boost your Pokémon's effort levels for different stats, which raises the stats you select. The only catch is you need different Grit items for different levels. I won't spend too much time talking about how about Grit items in depth, so instead I'll just tell you what I did. I got some Grit Gravel from releasing all the Pokémon I caught prior to catching Zubat, then I went back to Deer Track Heights, where I could catch a bunch of Pokémon from levels 10 through 15. After 30 minutes or so of grinding, I had enough Grit items to get all Zubat's stats to effort level 6, except for a special attack. In addition to boosting Zubat's stats, I also went to the training grounds to talk to Zisu, who can teach Pokemon new moves. Taking a look at Zubat's pool and moves I can buy from Zisu, it's much better than the measly move pool Zubat usually has, but for now, I'm interested in one move, Aerial Ace. Aerial Ace is a flying type move of 60 base power with the added bonus of never missing. So after the grind, I battled Krikatoon again. The first two attempts, I lost due to getting unlucky damage ranges, but the third time, Zubat uses Aerial Ace, dealing more than half damage, then Krikatoon uses its Aerial Ace, and Zubat just barely survives, and then gets me the win. I'm glad I'm going to beat Krikatoon without grinding too much, but I shouldn't be happy for too long, as things are only going to get worse from here. We go to the Heartwood to meet Leon of the Pearl Clan, and since we're Melly from the Diamond Clan, he wants to battle us, but his Gumi is pretty weak and does basically nothing, so it's a pretty easy victory. The next battle, however, is the opposite of easy, Arita's Glaceon. Glaceon is bad enough in my Blissey only challenge, but in this challenge, she's 1000 times worse. She outspeeds and goes for a quick attack and then falls off a Powder Snow, which instantly kills Zubat. Now, I tried to beat a spell by using Hypnosis, but after a dozen attempts, it just didn't seem viable. Hypnosis either straight up miss, or just wouldn't keep Glitchon from attacking long enough. So that leaves me with one choice, grind for Grit items some more, which I spent the next two hours doing. Let's fast forward to after the grinding. I got enough Grit items to max out speed and special defense, and I also boosted special attack to level 6. I also decided to buy every Valve move for Zubat, the one I'm mostly interested in is Sludge Bomb, as it's Zubat's strongest stab move and has a chance to poison the target. So if this doesn't work against Glaceon, I'm not sure what will. So I attempted this battle again, and Zubat outspeeds and uses Sludge Bomb, dealing with what seemed like about half damage. Then Glaceon goes for Powder Snow, and Zubat survives! Now come on Sludge Bomb, knock out Glaceon! Yes! Take that Glaceon! With all of that out of the way, we can finally take on the Lord of the Woods, Cleavor. Now I tried battling with Zubat, but no, just no. But thankfully we don't have to battle the noble Pokemon, and we can just keep throwing bombs and dodging attacks until they're quelled. I made it out almost completely unscathed apart from one attack at the end. 
So if we leave or quelled, we're done in the Obsidian Fieldlands and can move on to the Crimson Marlands. But first, Akari challenges us to a battle at the gate. She leads his Mime Jr., who's an easy one shot with Sludge Bomb. However, Pikachu gave us some trouble. They use Thunder Wave to paralyze Zubat, and then Thunder Shock brings Zubat down to a little below half health. The battle seemed hopeless, but Zubat now had another move, Leech Life. It does a good amount of damage and heals Zubat by 50% of the damage dealt, bringing Zubat above half health when I used it. Pikachu goes for another Thundershock, which Zubat just barely survives, and thanks to some luck of never getting paralyzed, Zubat's able to win first try. In the Crimson Marlands, we meet Warden Calibu of the Pearl Clan, but she won't accept our help because, well, I'm Melly. Instead, Volo shows up and challenges us to a battle, which goes by super easily. Togepi is a one-shot with Sludge Bomb, and Gilbo doesn't do enough damage to be a threat. We then run into the no-good Miss Fortune sisters, and have to battle Coin and her Toxicroak. But Zubat has a really good tight matchup against Toxicroak, so it's another easy battle. However, the next battle won't be so easy. We need to battle Ursaluna to calm him down, but he's super powerful. He resists our Poison-type moves and does a ton of damage with Slash, which would two-shot Zubat. First, I tried getting lucky with Hypnosis, but again, it just never worked out for me. Hypnosis just keep missing. Even when I was lucky enough for it to work, Zubat would barely do any damage to Ursaluna before Ursaluna would wake up and attack me. So, is that it? Is this run over? Well, not yet. While Zubat can't beat Ursaluna on his own, I'm sure I'll have better luck with a teammate. It's time to catch Melly's main Pokemon. Uh, Shiny Psyduck? I, I mean, that's cool and all, but the Pokemon I was actually talking about was Skunk Tank. Now, the only Skunk Tanks you can catch in the wild are above Ursaluna's level of 26. So using Skunk Tank like this would break the no overleveling rule. However, I did find a workaround. I instead caught Skunk Tank's pre-evolution Stunky, who meets the level limit. Now, yes, you could say this breaks the challenge rule since Melly never has a Stunky in-game, I'm going to assume his Skunk Tank originally started out as a Stunky and evolved later at level 34, which is level Stunky evolves at, by the way. So I added Stunky to my party and spent some more time getting Grit items. I boosted all of Stunky's stats to effort level 6 and maxed out all of Zubat's stats. I also taught my Pokemon a few more moves and used some seeds in Mastery and Master the moves, so now it could be Ursaluna, right? Well, still no. Stunky barely helped at all, as he only gets one turn before Ursaluna one-shots him with Bulldoze, and Zubat still couldn't do enough damage to win. But just when I felt like giving up, I noticed something very important. The reason I kept losing wasn't because of Zubat's low offense, it was because of Ursaluna's high defense. So I tossed Stunky one more move, Rock Smash. It's a fighting type move with 40 base power, so it doesn't do much damage, but it has an additional effect of lowering the opposing Pokemon's defense. So I gave the battle one last try. I let him Stunky who used a strong style Rock Smash to deal some damage and lower Ursaluna's defense. Ursaluna knocks out Stunky with a strong style Bulldoze, so Zubat can come out and get off an Agile style area lace followed up by a regular one. Ursaluna attacks with Slash, almost knocks Zubat out, but Zubat lives and gets the finishing blow. This was definitely the hardest battle so far, and what do I get for beating it? The ability to use Ursaluna to find treasures, which is basically useless for us. Before quelling the frenzied Lilligan, we set out to find Arazu, but along the way I find something crazy. A shiny Stunky! I was so tempted to replace one of my party with this one, but Melly's Skunk Tank isn't shiny, so I guess I'm not allowing that. To wrap up the Crimson Marlands, we have to quell his Zhuya and Lilligan, which was super easy. Zubat being a Poison and Flying type is actually the best type matchup against the Grass and Fighting type Lilligan, and I could one-shot her with Aerial Ace. After stopping in the village for a bit, we set out to the Cobalt Coastlands, but before we can go, Arena makes us battle her Glaceon. Again. But this time, it's a lot easier. I lead with Zubat, one-shot Eevee with Cross Poison, then Zubat goes down to Ice Beam, or he doesn't? However, Zubat also gets Frostbite from the Ice Beam, meaning he'll take damage after he attacks. Just to be safe, I use Leech Life so Zubat doesn't faint before Glaceon attacks and potentially puts Stunk Dunky in danger. Zubat faints to Ice Beam, so I safely switch out Stunky and knock out Glaceon on a critical hit with Flamethrower. I'm not sure if that critical hit really mattered, but either way, take that, Glaceon! Now that we're in the Cobalt Coastlands, we can catch Melly's third Pokemon, Scorpy, a Bug and Poison type Pokemon. Now, at first, I thought Scorby wouldn't be all that useful. However, I soon found a use for them later. Just you wait and see. 
With the full team assembled, we headed to Firespit Island, where we had to battle the three Bandit Sisters back to back. My first attempts went pretty well. I used Stunky's Rock Smash and Flamethrower to take out Clover's Abominus Snow. Then Coin sends out Toxicroak, who knocked out Stunky with Mud Bomb, so Zubat can come out a finished job of Aerial Lace. However, when I got to Charm, things didn't go too well. Her ride on resists Zubat's attacks and knocks them out with his rock, rock Slide, so all I have is Scorpy. There's no way a Bug Pokemon can beat a Rock type Pokemon, right? Well, Scorpy actually has one very useful move, Aqua Tail. For a team of Poison types, having a move to counter Ground types is great. However, as soon as I knocked out Rhydon, Gengar comes out and uses a combo with Agile Style Hypnosis and Hex to knock out Scorpy. So I had to battle the three sisters all over again. Yay! But putting the saltiness aside, I had a better strategy for my second attempt. It turns out I never needed Rock Smash or Bomb to Snow, so I one-shot them with Flamethrower. Then for Toxic Croak, I switch to Zubat and get another one-shot of Aerial Lace. So when I get to Charm, I have all three of my Pokemon ready. I immediately swap out Zubat for Scorpion and then go for Aqua Tail, which doesn't quite knock out Rhydon. Rhydon goes for two Bulldozes, but thanks to Scorpion being part Bug-type, they're able to tank both attacks. Then I get a chance to set up Swords Dance and knock out Rhydon with a Bite, but it's not over yet. Gengar comes out and goes for Hypnosis, but I go for a strong style Bite, it connects, and a one-shot. The Noble Growlithe evolves into Arcanine and scares away the bandits, but then they come as frenzied and we have to quell them. Now I just want to say, I love Arcanine and Hijuian Arcanine, but I just hate the boss battle for them here. It's just super claustrophobic and unfair to dodge their attacks. But on the plus side, I was able to battle another Noble Pokemon. You might think a Rock and Fire type would be a bad matchup for Melly, but with a combination of Stunky's Rock Smash and Scorpy's Aqua Tail, we could do it. Going forward, I also want to battle the rest of the Noble Pokemon with Melly's team to see which ones are possible to beat. Back in Jubilee Village, we meet with Commander Kamado to discuss our next mission in the Coronet Highlands, but then we get rudely interrupted by... Uh-oh, it's the real Melly. Just by the looks of him, I know two things. One, he knows I'm an imposter and I'm trying to make him a better person. And two, after all the customization I did so far, my character looks nothing like him. I'll try to fix that later, but nothing really worked perfectly. In the meantime, Adamant wants to battle Melly to try and impress... Uh, Melly? I honestly don't know. But what I do know is that the battle against Adamant's Leafeon was easy with Melly's poison types. You know, now that I think about it, I feel like Melee specifically chose Pokemon for countering Admin's Leafeon so he could beat him in battle and brag about it. That seems pretty in character for him if you ask me. Heading into the Coronet Highlands, we travel with the best character in the game, Ingo, whom Hope can teach Melee to be a better character as well. After confronting Melly for removing the torches from the cave, he challenges Melly, or I guess me, to battle. It's time for the ultimate mirror match, Melly's Skunk Tank versus Fake Melly's Skunk Tank. Who will win? Well, both Skunk Tanks no Flamethrower, but mine starts with Rock Smash and lowers Melly's Skunk Tank's defense. And well, it's pretty much over after that, as our Flamethrower was able to deal more damage. After that, it was time for another epic battle, Ingo vs. Melly, aka the best character in the game versus the worst character in the game. Honestly, this is the one battle that I hoped I would lose, but I actually won on the first try. Ingo leads with Machoke, so I use Zubat and go for Aerial Lace, and it gets them into the red. Then for whatever reason, Ingo calls back Machoke and sends out Gliscor. They do good damage to Zubat, but I just switched to the Scorpion and knocked him out with a strong style Aqua Tail. After that, Tangle and Machoke were easy to knock out, so I won, even though I feel kinda bad about that. Finally, we arrive at Moonview Arena, the home of Melly and his noble Pokemon Electrode, but he won't let his weird-looking clone quell Electrode, so we have to battle him again. Both of us have the same three Pokemon, but Melly uses three at once, but we can only use one at a time. I start with Scorpion and knock out the opposing Zubat before they use Hypnosis so they can't put my Pokemon to sleep. Then I use my Zubat to take care of the opposing Scorpion. And finally, I'll give down to Skunk Tank versus Skunk Tank again. And thanks to Rock Smash, it was another easy victory. I'll be honest, these mirror matches weren't as exciting as I hoped it would be, though. Melly cries like a baby for losing, so it's up to Melly, or I guess his weird clone, to quell a frenzied Electrode. It was actually really easy, as I could easily battle Electric and Grass type Electrode with Melly's Poison type Pokemon. In a way, it's actually made me hate Melly even more. He could have easily battled Electrode himself, but he chose to keep them frenzied and prevent anyone else from helping. Also, the dialogue after this battle confused me so much, I basically hurt myself trying to understand it. 
Now we just have one more noble Pokemon left to quell in the Alabaster Ice Lands. But first, Akari challenges us to another battle at the gate. Mr. Mime has one shot and Scorpius Cross Poison, but then Staravia comes out and one shots them with Brave Bird. So I bring out Skunk King, he's able to knock out Staravia with Poison Jab. And finally, Pichu comes out and tries to use Iron Tail, but it misses, and Skunk King gets another KO with Poison Jab. When we arrived in the Alabaster Ice Lands, we first had to battle Garrick, and it was pretty easy. Just have Skunk Tank use Dark Pulse on the Frostlass and Flamethrower on the Glalie. But Sabi was a different story. She has three strong Pokemon battle us all at once, and they're all scary. Magmortar can burn us, Electrovire can paralyze us, and Rhyperior is super effective against my entire team with their Rock and Ground type moves. To make matters worse, Rhyperior has great defense, and I couldn't one-shot them with Scorpius Aqua Tail at this level. So I leveled up some more and tried again, and this time Scorpius was able to one-shot Rhyperior with her strong style Aqua Tail, but the battle still wasn't over. I still had to deal with Magmortar and Electrovire. I ended up losing a few more times due to bad luck with the statues effects, but finally I got an attempt where I was able to tank the attacks, not get paralyzed, and win. Finally, Sabi has this battle Bravery, but that was just a matter of spamming Dark-type moves for victory. With Bravery, we can fly to Avlog's Legacy, get the Eternal Ice, and face off against the final Noble Pokémon. Now, for whatever reason, I had a lot of trouble dodging Avlog's attacks in the fight. It doesn't really add much to this challenge, but I just found it interesting. Now, for actually battling Avlog, I was able to use Gunkney's Rock Smash a few times and just barely scrape by with a sliver of health remaining. So we quelled all the noble Pokemon. Are we done now? Well, not quite, as Melly still has another mission, to save his Jui from the disaster looming. After a bunch of sad cutscenes, we set off with Volo and Adamin for the three lakes to get help from the Lake Guardians. At each lake, we need to battle an alpha Pokemon before completing the Guardian's Trial. Mesprit has us fight his Jui and Gudra, a Steel and Dragon type. I let his Skunk Tank try to get off as many Rock Smashes as possible. Gudra got to low HP, but then they went for Shelter, then knocked out Skunk Tank. But thanks to Zubat's Aerial Lace I can never miss, I was able to just do enough damage to knock out Gudra. Mesprit asks us... Mesprit asks us to share our feelings with them. I don't think it matters what you choose here, but either way, I try my best to choose the feelings I believe Melly would have, and then we got Mesprit's Plume. Next was Uxy, where we need to battle his Jui and Zorark, which was super easy thanks to Skunk Tank having the one type that the normal and ghost type Zorark is weak to. Uxie gives us a quiz about Pokemon eyes. I'm not sure if Melly would be smart enough to solve it, but he probably knows that Zubat has zero eyes at least, so I'll give him that. Finally, for Azulf, we need to battle Overquill, which is super easy as they just spammed Double Edge and knocked themselves out, and after throwing a bunch of bombs at Azulf, we get their Fang, and then we gather up to all the Lake Guardians to get the Red Chain. We head to Temple of Sinnoh, only to be stopped by Benny the Ninja. While he's not as bad as he was in my Blissey only challenge, he's still no joke. His Pokemon can still do a lot of damage, this is the first battle in a while where my team of 3 is outnumbered. Even though my Pokemon aren't weak to many of Benny's moves, his Pokemon still deal a lot of damage. I lost this fight several times, and I thought I was going to have to level up some more to stand a chance, but I want to try and beat Benny at this level one more time, so let me show you my best attempt. I start with Skunk Tank's Dark Pulse, which gets me to make us in red health, so Benny uses up his max potion. So I use another Dark Pulse, and his Megas goes for Power Gem, which doesn't do too much. I then knock out his Megas with a Jow Style Flamethrower, so the next Pokemon won't be able to outspeed me. Sneasler comes out and goes for Close Combat, which gets Skunk Tank in the red. So I switch out for Zubat, who tanks another Close Combat, and knocks out Sneasler with a quad effective Zen Headbutt. Gardevoir one-shots Zubat with Psychic, that gives me time to use Swords Dance on Scorpion and follow up with a strong style Cross Poison, which takes out Gardevoir easily. All that's left now is Gallade. He goes for a strong style Psycho Cut and knocks on Scorpy, but I still have Skunk Tank, I get to attack twice and play rough, which wins the battle. But I shouldn't have let myself get too excited over my victory. I thought Benny was bad enough, but Commander Kamado is even worse. He leads with Bravery, who Skunk Tank takes care of pretty easily, but the rest of his team is brutal. He has a Golem that's able to counter my entire team in the Rock and Ground type moves. Then there's also Snorlax, who's super tanky and knows Zen Headbutt and high horsepower, who is able to counter my whole team again. Clefable isn't that bad thanks to their poison weakness, but they set up a calm mind, things can get rough. Yeah, I'm definitely not winning at this level, so I leveled up my Pokemon some more and kept trying this fight. Trying the same strategy over and over wasn't working, so I tried to change up my strategy. This time I led with Scorpy and tried to take up Bravery of Crunch. It wasn't enough to knock them out, but it was enough for Commander Kamado to use up his max potion on Bravery. 
I switch in a skunk tank and go for dark pulls, hoping to knock them out. But they survive on red HP and then go for Giles style air slash and fall up on another one to get skunk tank low. I finally knock out Bravery, but then Snorlax comes out and knocks out Skunk Tank. I have Zubat over two Sludge Bombs, which gets Snorlax low, but then knock out Zubat with a strong style Zen Headbutt. Things aren't looking too good, but I still have Scorpy, so who knows, maybe I still have a chance. Since Snorlax used a strong style move, Scorpy gets to set up Swords Dance before attacking and knock out Snorlax. The Fable comes out next, and to my surprise, they go for Baby Doll Eyes instead of Calm Mind, so go for a strong style Cross Poison and knock them out. Then there's only one Pokemon left, but it's Golem. I know for a fact they're gonna go for Rock Side and knock me out, right? Well, once again, Kamado makes a dumb choice and goes for Stealth Rock, which Scorpy survives, and then he goes for a Strong Style Aqua Tail, clutching out the victory. I'm not quite sure how that worked or why the AI made stupid choices like that, but hey, I'll take it. Finally, we've made it to the Temple of Sinnoh, where we need to catch the Almighty Dialga, or as the Diamond Clan would call it, Almighty Sinnoh. But catching them is actually harder than I thought, and for the first time in my life, I actually failed to catch them the first time. At first, I wasn't sure how I could catch them, but then I had an idea. Zubat's hypnosis hasn't been all that helpful throughout this run, but maybe, just maybe this one time, it could work for me. So I tried the battle again and got Dialga's health low with a few rock smashes from Skunk Tank. Then I switched to Zubat and come on Hypnosis, please work. Yes, Dialga's asleep. Now I can go for the Ultra Ball and I caught Dialga. Let's go. But Melee's mission still isn't over. He still has to stop the Pearl Clan's Almighty Sinnoh, Palkia. To do so, we need to get some Origin Ore from a cave. But then the Bandit Sisters battle us one last time. But just like that last time, Charm was an absolute pushover with Scorpy's Aqua Tail. So that kind of just leaves catching Palkia, which goes by pretty easily. Oh yeah, I kind of forgot to battle Palkia of Melee's Pokemon, but I'm pretty sure it would have been easy since I taught Skunk Tank play rough. So we've confirmed that, yes, it is possible to beat Pokemon Legends Arceus with only Melee's team. But before we end off this video, there's still one more battle I want to try, and I think you all know who it is. So, can Melee beat Volo, the hardest boss in all of Pokemon? Well, I'm not too sure. Melee only has three Pokemon, and they're all poison types, lacking good type coverage. But here's the thing, Melee actually has one more Pokemon, the Noble Electrode, so I caught an Alpha Voltorb and evolved him with a Leaf Stone, giving us our true final member of the team. Before attempting the fight, I also maxed out all my Pokemon's effort levels. Here are my final stats. Volo has a team of 6 powerful Pokemon, so I figured the best way to go over this fight would be to go over each Pokemon individually. Spiritomb may look scary, but they're actually Volo's weakest Pokemon, as Skunk Tank resists their moves and can one-shot them with play rough. Togekiss isn't that bad on their own, and Electro can easily counter them, but they can use Calm Mind to buff their stats, which makes them scary, and they can one-shot Scorpio of Air Slash regardless. Roserade is easily countered with Zubat, but they are a big threat to everyone else on my team, especially the Grass and Electric type Electrode. Arcanine is one shot with a strong style Aqua Tail from Scorpy, but they are still a major threat to my whole team if I don't knock them out in time. Lucario is another major threat, as they're immune to poison type moves and can deal a ton of damage to my whole team. The best way to deal them was with Skunk Tank's Flamethrower, but wasn't always a guaranteed one shot due to Lucario using Bulk Up. And finally, there was Garchomp, the powerful ground and dragon type Pokemon from the Sinnoh region that everyone fears, for reasons. Now how will I beat them? Well, with Electrode, of course. Now you may be wondering how an Electro type Pokemon can beat a ground and dragon type, but I think it's about time I went over Electrode's moveset. Electrode knows Ice Ball, which is quad super effective against Garchomp, and while it doesn't have much base power, its power increases the more you use it, so Garchomp is an easy two-shot with it. Electrode also knows Energy Ball, Wild Charge, and Rest. Rest may seem like a weird move on Electrode, but the move Wild Charge actually has a niche bonus effect. Whenever a Pokemon to sleep uses Wild Charge, they instantly wake up. Combine that with Rest, which heals you to max HP and puts you to sleep, as well as Electrode's high speed stat, you have an easy way to heal up and follow up with an attack. So with all of that in mind, let's go over my best attempt. 
Now, I actually start with Electrode against Spiritomb and go for Wild Charge, which gets Spiritomb on low HP. Volo decides to switch out Spiritomb for Rose Raid, which is what I wanted to happen, so I can switch into Zubat. But before taking them out, I go for an Agile Style Air Release, which gets Rose Raid low, and Volo decides to waste to help his full restore, just as I wanted. After knocking out Rose Raid the next turn, Arcanine comes out and goes to Rock Slide, but I actually get lucky and it misses Zubat, so I get a safe switch into Scorpy, and I get to go for a Strong Style Aqua Tail and knock out Arcanine. Togekiss comes out and goes for Calm Mind and Air Slash, knocking out one of my four Pokemon. I then send out Electrode and go for two Wild Charges to take out Togekiss. Next is Lucario, who goes for Close Combat, and Electrode just barely survives. Instead of going for Skunk Tank though, I go for Zubat and use a Strong Style Shadow Ball, bringing Lucario's HP low. Lucario then knocks out Zubat with Strong Style Close Combat, but then I bring out Electrode, and thanks to Lucario using a Strong Style move and Electrode's high speed, I get three moves to use in a row. I go for Rest Heal to max HP, and then knock out Lucario with a Jow Style Wild Charge. Spiritomb comes back, but they don't do much, and I knock them out with Ice Ball, so Electro will be fixed to on using against Garchomp. Garchomp almost knocks out Electro with Dragon Claw, but two Ice Balls are just enough to take him out. So we beat Volo, right? Right? Oh, no, not again. Well, now Volo summons Giratina to destroy us. We're then immediately thrown into another battle without the ability to heal in between. We have to fight a Giratina that has boosted stats and knows Earth Power. Oh. Skunk Tank is super effective against Giratina of Dark Pulse, and on my best attempt, I was able to get Giratina to zero health, but just when you think it's all over, Giratina turns to their origin form and regains all of their health. I only managed to get to the final phase once, and I wasn't even close to beating it. So, can Melee beat Pokemon Legends Arceus? Well, he can beat the main game and beat the first two phases of the Volo battle, but I think that's as far as he'll ever get. Now obviously, Volify is 100% possible by overleveling, or by using items, but to me, that kind of ruins the point of the challenge, so, so I think I'm just going to end it off right here. In the end, I'm just happy for trying this challenge out, and I'm also happy that I sort of made Melly somewhat of a better person, I think. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching this challenge video. I hope you all enjoyed it, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe for more awesome content like this. But thanks for watching, I'll see you all next time. Goodbye!